deliver. I will. Thank you. Uh, tonight, 
And we must understand this. You'll notice uh, last week and the week before in chapter number 13, I believe uh, uh, my study is correct, chapter number 13 through chapter number 19, uh, is the warnings and the woes and the judgments uh, upon lands and upon nations that the prophet Isaiah is foretelling that will take place. And uh, uh, we know that Moab, uh, most of you may have remembered the land of Moab uh, from the book of Ruth and uh, the Moabites and the Moabitess women and uh, the gods, uh, the little G-O-D-S's that were uh, in the land of Moab. Matter of fact, that's what Orpha did. She uh, kissed her mother-in-law and turned back to the gods of Moab. And we know that uh, Ruth, uh, she claimed unto Naomi and turned from the Moabitess uh, religion and the gods of Moab. But where does this name Moab, where does it come from? Well, believe it or not, uh, Moab was the nation which came from Lot. Uh, that was through uh, uh, the incestuous relationship with his elder daughter uh, after that Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. If you remember that the Lord uh, told them not to turn around, not to look back. Uh, once they left that city to depart from it, you remember Lot's wife turned to look back and was turned to a pillar of salt. And uh, I had somebody say before, I uh, said, Preacher, I wonder maybe if she turned around to uh, uh, recognize her children or notice her children. Well, when you get to Genesis chapter number 19, that could be so uh, because those daughters came out with Lot. And uh, their, their husbands obviously never came out, uh, but they did. And uh, whenever they came out, uh, it was the desire for one of them, uh, the eldest, uh, the firstborn, uh, to lay. That's where Moab uh, came from. And believe it or not, uh, after that, uh, the other laid, and that's where the Ammonites come from. And uh, so uh, if you'll notice that through this illegitimate child, uh, the son of this affair, the waste uh, uh, it was put to waste, uh, of the, and the fathers uh, became the fathers of the Moabites. Also, his name was Moab. And today, Moab seems to have disappeared, uh, but the modern uh, Moabites is what we're going to show and study about tonight. They're still here uh, as far as what a Moabite is considered. And uh, the, the Sion and the nature of Sion uh, that has been passed down from generation to generation. So if you'll go with me uh, to Genesis chapter number 19. Look with me in verse number 31. Notice what your verse number 30. Notice what the Bible said. Lot went up out of Zorah and dwelt in the mountain of uh, and his two daughters with him. For they feared to dwell in Zorah. You remember that was the land that uh, Lot had chose to go to whenever he was fleeing from Sodom and Gomorrah. was the land of Zorah uh, because it was close by and, uh, 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 it was a small land, and Lot thought he could find favor there. And he dwelt in a cave, and his two dogs. And the firstborn said unto the younger, Our father is old, and there is not a man in the earth to come to us after the manner of all the earth. Come, let us make our father drink wine. We will lie with him, that we may preserve seed of our father. They made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in and lay with their father, he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. It came to pass on the Lord that the firstborn said unto the younger, Behold, I lay yesterday night with my father. Let us make him drink wine this night also. Go thou in, lie with him, that we may preserve seed of our father. They made their father drink wine that night also. The younger rose, lay with him, and he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. Thus were both the daughters of Lot with child by their father. And the firstborn of his son, he called his name Moab, the, the same as the father of the Moabites unto this day. The younger also, bear son, he called his name Benaiah, the same as the father of the children of Ammon unto this day. And so I just want to say this tonight. I know that, I mean, that, that just sounds like modern day living. Would you not agree with that tonight? Uh, but I want you to understand that uh, today, in the year 2022, is not the first sign of sin. It's not the first sign that things have got bad or that things have got worse. And I want you to understand tonight that sin itself has always been around and trying to make uh, trying to make wrong right by doing wrong, it will never happen. Amen. I mean, it'll never happen. I mean, God destroyed uh, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah because of their sin. I want you to understand that it wasn't necessarily because of the sin of Sodom. 
that the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. But the reason that the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah is because it was a place of sin. It was a place that had rejected Christ and turned away from Christ. And even those that God brought out of that land, we find uh, going again and doing something that, I mean, just plumb sick. Plum nasty. I mean, uh, <clears throat> what we read about here in the book of Genesis chapter 19, uh, sound like something you'll listen on the news uh, uh, before you came to church tonight. I just want you to understand that sin uh, has always abounded since uh, Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. Uh, uh, and I want you to understand it, that uh, we stood in need of a Savior. Aren't you glad that the same blood of Christ even though sin, that, I mean, we're hearing of things that we never imagined would have taken place. But if you go back and read your Bible, they were already partaking of that sin. That's why God loved the world enough that He gave His only begotten Son that you and I could have a Savior to have. Amen. Amen. I want you to understand that. We still, in the day we're living in, now it's Moab itself. What you have to understand here is that Isaiah is given a prophecy. What Isaiah is saying is that that land of Moab is going to rise up again. Now, as we, as we look at our Bible and we study, I can't stand here tonight and tell you that the land of Moab uh, itself will rise up again. But I can tell you this. I can tell you that the Moabites people and the way the Moabites were living, that we have New Testament scriptures tonight that says they're still here and they're still living. And Isaiah is telling us tonight there's going to come a day that them Moabites and is going to be judged and they're going to, and the wrath of God is going to pour out on them. That's what he's telling us in chapter 15. Matter of fact, uh, while we're laying the foundation, let's just look at it. that all right there. Go to 2 Timothy chapter number 2 tonight. 2 Timothy chapter 2. And if you will, I want you to turn there because I want you to see it on, your, on the pages of your Bible tonight. I want you to just take my word for it. Go to 2 Timothy chapter number 2 tonight. We'll look in verse uh, number uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. I mean chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Let's look at verse number 5. Notice what your Bible says here. Well, let's, uh, let's look at verse number 2. For me, I shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, bolsters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. What, look at verse number 3. Without natural affection. Would you not say that Moab started without natural affection? The eldest daughter slept with her father. And then for not even the very next night, made him drunk again, and the younger daughter went and did the exact same thing. Would you not agree with me tonight? That is not natural affection. I hope I can safely say this amongst God's people tonight. I love my daughter. I'm talking about I love, I die for them. Amen. I, I live for them. But I'm telling you, it's a far different kind of love than the love I have for their mother tonight. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. I want you to understand there's nothing wrong with a mother loving her boy and a father loving her daughter. But there is a place where we cross the line under something that is not even natural affection. Yeah, Amen. Can you even imagine tonight? I mean, uh, noticing that uh, the stench that is in the nostrils of God tonight. Do you realize that if the bed uh, it, it is undefiled because a man and a woman's not married, can you only imagine the stench that must be in the nostrils of God uh, for two men to try to lay in that bed or for two women to try to lay in that bed? I'm telling you tonight, no matter what the world says, there's coming a day of judgment and the wrath of God will be poured out. Hey, listen, I'm not preaching a hate message tonight. We ought to thank God that He loves us. And I believe this with all my heart tonight. It doesn't matter how far out in Sodom or Sodom they are or Moab they are tonight. If they call upon the Lord under repentance and under salvation, I believe with all my heart there's a God that loves them enough that He forgive all that. Why it all the way justify them just that they've never done it? Here's the problem today. Notice what He writes. Verse number 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 3. Without natural affection, true strangers, false accusers, incontinent fears, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God. Wait just a minute. Look at verse number 5. Having a form of God, 
but denying the power thereof. What's what your Bible said? From such turn away. My friend, tonight I'll just be honest with you. Hey, listen, if there is sin and lost none without the Lord, I believe we ought to open the church doors and we ought to welcome them in. And hey, listen, I'm not talking about a position. I'm not talking about uh, they'll not be able to preach or not be able to teach and they'll not be in the choir. Why? Because the church membership is still ought to be made up of those born again saved by the grace of God. I'll just be honest with you tonight. I believe uh, I probably for a month I can pause on the book of Isaiah. We can preach on the church covenant and, and the scripture that lines it up. But can I say when we join ourselves as a member of Charity Hill Baptist Church, we're saying we're of like faith. Yeah. What that means is this. We believe there's one God and there's one mediator between God and man. I'm about to have myself a the man, the son, Christ, the man, Christ Jesus, that went to the cross and died for. We we believe that we're in like faith on that. We believe in the death and the burial and the resurrection of Lord Jesus Christ. That is the gospel. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are the gospels. But the gospel itself is the death and the burial and the resurrection of Lord Jesus Christ. Our, our bylaws tell us tonight. Our church government tells us tonight that we will not partake of drugs and more alcohol tonight. Hey, listen, I'm talking about buying it. I'm talking about selling it. I'm talking about driving the car while you're drinking it. I'm talking about letting you do it at my house. It's against the church covenant. And it's against the word of God. Amen. You say, well, preacher, if I don't drive them around, who's going to? Somebody that's lost. We ain't supposed to have a part of that tonight. Let me just ask you something. How would you feel if you knew I stand here trying to preach tonight and last night I hoovered a bunch of drunks around town? How'd you like to know that maybe my daughters wasn't involved, but because I'm the pastor and I care about the safety of young people in Wilkes County, they drank down in my house last night and they got drunk and laid out, passed out, but at least they're in a safe place. God help us now. I tell you what that is. That solemnly creeping into the house of God tonight. I tell you what the Bible said. The Bible said for those of us that know to do good and choose not to do it, it's going to be worse on us than it was in the day of Sodom. Amen. 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 Michael said, I'm Isaiah's prophesied. There's going to be a pouring out of the judgment and the wrath of God yeah. on the land of Moab. You saw the picture of the land of Moab's gone. It's been wiped out. Yeah, but they're creeping into our churches. Right. Yeah. I'm just telling you what Paul told Timothy. He said they have a form of godliness. Wait just a minute. If they didn't have a form of godliness, they wouldn't be part of the church. Somebody would say, man, here's the problem. They want to live in Sodom, but they don't act like they're living in Cain. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. The reason Moab was separated and, and the reason that Orpha kissed through and went back to Moab is she realized she couldn't carry the Moabitess religion and, and be welcomed down at Bethlehem Judah. And, oh, but thank God, and, in the same story, if there was one that said, I'll not return and, and I'll not go back. I've never been to Bethlehem Judah, but I've heard enough about it that I've Amen. Boy, aren't you glad tonight you didn't die in Moab? Hey, listen, tonight we might as well be hard. We feasted from the tables. We drunk from the bottles. Down in Moab, but thank God there's a day in our life when old Moab was crucified and Bethlehem Judah was born in our hands. Hey. Amen. Well, watch this right here. Go to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter number 12. Hebrews chapter 12, let's look at verse number 8 tonight. Hebrews 12, look at verse number 8. The Bible said, But if ye be without chastised, whereof all, all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not so. You're right. I want you to understand something. The world has made that word a curse word. But that word bastard, you know what that means? It means non belonging. Or no son of mine. That's what it means. A bastard. It means trying to get in some other way. That's what it is, son. Well, I, I, I don't care. If I, I know I'm online. I, I don't care what Oprah said or how much money she's got. There's only one way to 
to, the, to right. God. And that's through the Son, Jesus Christ. Right. There's not many roads to heaven. Matter of fact, that's a, the very opposite of what our Bible says. Right. Our Bible says, broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Right. But narrow is the gate right. that leadeth unto Christ. Oh, I want to say, thank God, there is a door. And if you're willing to go through the door, He is the door. You can be saved. Right. But it's a narrow road. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. It's a narrow road. I'm just telling you what your Bible says. The Bible says, you said, preach, how in the world, how in the world, preacher, can they be saved by the grace of God and live like they're living and not be chasing for it? I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what the Bible said. They've never been saved. Right, right. He said, preacher, are you judging? No, I'm just reading you the Bible. Right. Amen. I, I, just, I just got reason to believe this tonight. You and Father on it. Rolling around, she won't get mad about it or not. Uh, here it is. If I can't think of it without falling under conviction, how in the world can my brother, if he's really a brother, water him and never be chasing him? Right. Right. And I'm just telling you that I understand that there are certain qualifications for the pastor, for the deacons, for the deacon's wife. I know that. Pastor's wife is an example. I understand it. But when it comes to sin, if it ain't right for you, it ain't right for me. Right. And if it ain't right for me, I don't care how long you've been a member of the church, it ain't right for you. Right. And if you don't look down at the man of God and the family of the man of God and the deacons and the leadership of the church for living like you're living, it's a pretty obvious sign you ought not be living like you're living. That's good preaching. That's just Bible preaching. They ain't nothing good about Brian Cardwell. That's Bible preaching tonight. And here's what I believe with all of my heart. It's sad to say. I believe here's what it is tonight. I believe that some of us sit on the church pew that the only reason that old fashioned heaven sent Holy Ghost, I'm talking about sin killing, so good in the Bible, that broke out. It's simply because uh, most of us in the church uh, either need to lay some things down uh, or simply get born again by the grace of God. Yeah. There's just places and things that we can't do and we can't go. Right. Only because we've been born again and saved by the grace of God. There's just a few things tonight that. Hey, listen, you can do anything you want to. It's free will. I'm saying it's an independent Baptist church. church. and a free will Baptist church. You understand God gives you free will. Yeah. You can leave this building and not do anything you want to do. But if you've been born again saved by the grace of God, here's the thing. What you want to do will line up with what the Word of God says you ought to do. Don't die on me now. Don't get real quiet. All I said was, what you want to do well, line up with what the Word of God says you ought to do. Yeah. Yeah. Watch this now. Go into the book of Jude. Look at verse number 16. Look at Jude. Look at verse number 16. These are mumblers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouths speak of great swelling words. Oh, my. Hmm. Having men's persons in, in, in admiration because of advantage. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves sensual, having not the Spirit. Preacher, how in the world can they live like that? I mean, they one time was here and now they're there. How can they live like that? Can I just give you a Bible on it tonight? They have not the Spirit. Right. You know where Satan comes in at? And I hope you know this, and I hope I'm not telling you anything fresh, anything new. Satan is the author of confusion. Right. And I'd be a liar to stand here tonight and tell you that some that I've seen go never had a touch of God on them or God never used them. Amen. I want you to notice this. 
so did Judas. Right. Yeah. So did Judas. Brother Floyd, if Judas had been any different than the other 11 disciples, when Jesus said he would dip with his hand in the dish, he means he that shall betray me. Everybody would have looked at Judas. Right. But the Bible said they would begin to question yeah. who it is. Yeah. I believe Judas performed miracles. I believe Judas was there when the when the 5,000 were fed. I believe he was one of the 12 that had a basket left over. I believe Judas was there when the people were raised from the dead, when the sick were healed. I believe Judas was there. I, I believe he was there at prayer meetings. I, hey, listen, I believe he was there when Jesus walked through the town. I, and people admired those men of God and those disciples. I, oh, but my friend, I, he was a traitor. I, he was not who he said. My friend tonight, because of our flesh, whether we want to admit it or not, because of our flesh, as many times we're going to be fooled. There's one thing I can promise you. The Spirit of God will never lie. You're right. I want you to understand something. Please hear. Please hear. I believe there's some heresy preachers. I believe there's some men that are claiming to be preachers that have never been called. I believe that. Yeah. I want you to understand something. Hear me now. If they preach out of that book, yep. and they preach that word, and they proclaim that word, I want you to understand something. Don't put your salvation to who was standing there when you got to salvation. Right, 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 right. You hook your salvation to what thus saith the word of God. Right. I'll tell you a little nugget. I mean, this helped me and my family the other day. Man, did God show up and help us. But Faith was having some questions and we was talking and she said, Dad, I'm going to ask you something. She said, how, how, I mean, how do you know? I mean, I know what the Bible says. I know what you read to me. I'm just asking you, as my pastor, as my daddy, I'm just asking you. I said, Faith, I'm going to tell you something. It was February 18th of 1990. And I remember that because I wrote it down in my Bible. That's the only reason I, honest, that's the only reason I remember it because I wrote it down. But Brother Boy, I have no idea what I said that night. I remember leaving that pew on my swap. Yeah. And I remember my pastor asking me what I needed. And I told him. I was headed to hell. I want to be saved. That's all I remember. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what all I prayed. I don't even remember if a pastor prayed on me. All I remember is my mom come off the organ down there and my pastor was there. I have no idea who else is in that order. And here's what Faith said to me. Uh, uh, she said, Daddy, I just want to know how you know. I said, Faith, here's all I got to tell you. I hope you're listening to me now. I said, here's all I got to say. Not as your daddy right now, but as your pastor. If you followed that Bible, you've done what that Bible said to get saved. And I've done what that Bible said to get saved. Watch this. If you're lost, I'm lost. Because I trusted that Bible. Right, right. I, didn't, I, I don't remember what the preacher said. I don't remember what I prayed that night. No. But I do know this. No. I know I claimed the Bible. No. I claimed that word. No. Hey, listen. No. No matter who's preaching right in that side, no matter who showed you the scripture, it was what you believed in that scripture. Put your faith in that Bible. That's how you got born again. Saved by the grace of God. Oh, on the other hand, I got real good news. I said, Faith, I believe I got it. I believe it because I believe that word. And if you believe the same Bible I believe in, then just proclaim it. That God does what he said he's going to do. Then we went over there to the youth camp. And Brother David Williams got up, he preached some message one morning on what I run around for someone to preach to you a little bit Sunday morning. After the young people got done, simply about the fact, or I think I preached it to you Sunday night, that whenever Satan came to the Lord, he said, If thou be the Son of God, I said it to him twice. Jesus never even acknowledged that statement. It was, it was closed for discussion. Never acknowledged. Why? Because he knew he was the Son of God. He knew he was the Son of God. I, I told you the other night, there's like Chandler held up that verse to me. He said, my name's out. My daddy's name's out. Hey, listen, I can't hold my heavenly verse to me. But like I said, I don't even know where my original one is tonight. But I'm still going to keep on believing that I am who I say I am. I, I'm who my license say I am. I, I'm who I am that I pay taxes. God help us too. Anybody pay attention? I, I'm still going to believe that, that 1406 is where I grew up at. <laughs> Anybody listening? I got born again, saved by the grace of God. 
get saved at Bible school. You can get saved with Timothy. You can get saved in the Holy Ghost revival. We see it all happen. Hey, watch this. But when they take the tip down, you will have you still shout victory. Because you based it on the Word of God. And not the tip. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Boy, ain't God good. Amen. I'm just telling you, Bible. I have a problem. With people having a spiritual insight. Matter of fact, I, I don't care to tell you this tonight. I get real nervous as a pastor when people can live the way they live. This is a little quick. I've been praying about this. I hear the Lord show me something on this. Well, I'm still concerned that the Lord's showing you something that I need to do, we need to do, somebody over there needs to do. You still ain't got clarification from the Lord that the lifestyle that you're living in and the things that you're dealing with are still not contrary to the Word of God. Yeah, right. You know what the Bible said it is? He said it was Moabites. And Isaiah has given us a prophecy that it's going to happen. And every reference I took you to tonight is New Testament Scripture. It's not the Old Testament. That tells me tonight that what Isaiah was prophesying about has been written down after the prophesying of Isaiah. It's been given to us. It's simply this. That after the Lord sent the rainbow in the sky after the flood, he said it wouldn't be by water next time, but it'd be by fire. You know what that is? That's a future telling of what's going to happen. Hey, friend, if you're waiting on the flood, it ain't going to happen. It'll be burnt with fire. Why? Because we're based on the Word of God. Based on the Word of God. Here's what I'd love to see. I'd love to see everyone that's out there in the world. That's left all these people. I'd love to see them get right with God. I'd love to see them get in. According to the Bible, and I name it two things that need to happen. Either they need to get right with God and get right with mankind. Or they need to get born again. Right. Ain't two places you live. You can't be born again saved by the grace of God and live that lifestyle of excuse me, a Moab and have the presence of God in your life. You're right. You're it just ain't real. It's there. You so I want you to explain this to me. You tell me how that they can leave this church over here mad. They go join this church over here. Every time you hear about what's going on at that church, it's shouting, people being saved. And, I mean, man, that place is growing over there. Here's all I know to tell you. As long as that Bible's preached and that Bible's proclaimed, that, that Bible's going to speak. That, amen. 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 I'm just being honest with you. I believe our president got on the news. He quoted some scripture. The people out there listening got to hold that scripture. I believe God turned our nation around. Amen. I believe he could use that. Yeah. Anybody paying attention? Yeah. I believe the Lord gave mine because the fire is in the Word of God. Right. Not the president. Right. Right. The fire is in the Word of God. How many times have you and I not had our life for it all to be with God? But that Bible spoke to us huh? and it changed us and it corrected us and it helped us. Huh? Why? Because the power huh? is in the Lord, not in the man. The fire is in the Lord tonight. Amen. What's this? I want you to notice a few things going in the book of Ezra, chapter 9. I'll give you two things and I'll be done. Hopefully, it's in the book of Ezra, chapter number 9. In Isaiah 15, verse number 2, the Bible said, He has gone up to buy and to dip on. The high places to weep Moab shall have over Nebo and over Medeba. On all their heads shall be baldness and every beard cut. In their streets shall they gird themselves with sackcloth on the tops of their house, and in their streets everyone shall have. Weeping abundantly. What the Bible is telling us tonight is whenever this judgment, this wrath of God is poured out, the Bible is telling us tonight, I mean, they're going to shave their head. They're going to try to put on the sackcloth. I mean, they're going to try to repeat. They're going to try to bow down. And notice the Bible said even from Nebo, over Nebo, I mean, from, uh, from the, the mountain Nebo, uh, and even over the Medina, and all their heads shall be baldness in every beard. I mean, they're trying to get a hold of God. They're trying, but my friend, the wrath and the judgment is being poured out because of their sin and the cause of their wickedness. Matter of fact, if you go with me to look at uh, Ezra, chapter number 9, and in verse number 3, notice this. And when I heard this thing, I went my garment and my mantle, and plucked off the hair of my head. And my beard 
and sat down as long. Then were assembled underneath every one that trembled at the words of, of the God of Israel because of the transgressions of those that had been carried away. And I set a song unto the evening sacrifice. I'm telling you tonight, listen, if you remember, you know who Ezra was. Ezra was a preacher that after the walls of Nehemiah was built up. Ezra was the man of God that they called. And they set up a pulpit, like I said, made of wood. And he stood up above the people after the walls of Nehemiah. Oh, was a king in two days. And the walls was rebuilt. Hey, listen to my. And all those that had said, hey, ain't going to happen either. A flock would come up. There'll be holes left in the after that wall. They brought Ezra in and put up a pulpit of wood. And he stood up above the people when he opened up the Bible. The Bible said, when he opened that book, those people stood to their feet. And listen, when they began to clap, they began to proclaim. Because the book was open under them. I understand what the Bible, like I'm holding my hand tonight. My friend, it was the truth of God. The book was open. And they shouted. They stood up on their feet. And they rejoiced. Man, I wonder what happened to y'all done that Sunday morning. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we can't stand here and be, well, go pray, read the word. I see y'all ain't going to do that. Don't worry about that. What's this? Go with me to Isaiah 15, verse 9. Verse 9. For the waters of Demon shall be full of blood. For I will bring more upon them on mines upon him that escape the most. And upon the rim of the land. I don't know if you're getting it or not. The Lord is pouring out destruction. I mean, the, what Isaiah is saying is, listen, there's a price to pay for this. You can't live this lifestyle. You, you, you can't claim to have uh, Christian boundaries and Christian uh, standards and live a whole kind of life. He said, it's going to be poured out. Wrath of God's going to be poured out. You'll find that in Ezra chapter number 9 and in verse number 14. Notice what the Bible said. Should we again break thy commandments and join in affinity with the people of these abominations? Wouldst thou not be angry with us till thou hast consumed us so that there should be no remnant nor escaping? O Lord God of Israel, thou art righteous. For we remain yet escaped. As it is, is this day. Behold, we are before thee in our trespasses. For we cannot stand before thee because of thee. And this John in the Revelation, John said that when he saw the Lord, that he fell down like a dead man. That was John in all of his righteousness. When he saw the Lord, he fell down like a dead man. Hey, listen, I'm telling you tonight, I believe in the presence of Almighty God. No matter how, I mean, listen, no matter how long I preach, how long I've been saved, how many years you've been saved, when we stand before Him, I believe with all my heart that the glory of God will cause us to fall down. I mean, prostrate across the ground. I mean, because of His hope. How in the world do we think we could ever stand before Him? sinful lives. My friend, the preacher may not know anything about it. My wife even said uh, on the way to church tonight, she said, I wonder just what people really think about how much the preacher knows or what he has to hear or what he goes through or what he sees. So sometimes, I'm just being honest and I don't mean this up, sometimes I wish I was as dumb as people thought of Probably in my capability, in my own capability, I, I'm dumber than most of you. Boy, I'm glad for the Spirit of God. Yeah. Right. Here's all I know to tell you tonight. If that Bible says it, it doesn't matter whether you and I like it or not. Right. 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 Because we believe it does not settle. Right. It will settle before you and I ever believe it. Right. 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 But believe it will settle it within your heart. And it will settle your life tonight. Let me give you this. Isaiah chapter number 15 corresponds to this. Isaiah 15, the Moabites opposed Israel. In Ezra 4, the non-Jews of the land, the Samaritans, opposed the returned children of Israel. In Isaiah 15, verse 1, 
the Moab is laid waste and is brought to silence. The curve of Moab is laid waste and brought to silence. In Ezra chapter number 9, the people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the people of the land, doing according to the abominations even of the Moab, Moabites. Moab is a type of the religious world. How many times have you said this or heard it said? That religion itself will send to hell. Right. My friend, there's a lot of people that are religious people that have no personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Israel has united with ungodliness, but they should have separated themselves. That's what Isaiah is trying to tell us. That's what Isaiah is probably to And if we're not careful, you know what's happened to us? The children of God is that we have found ourselves and joined ourselves to the lifestyles and the people of those lifestyles that we have no business doing ourselves for. And the judgment of God is coming. Here's what I want you to understand. I'm done with it. The Lord wants us to love. The Lord wants us to forgive. The Lord wants us to win. My friend, in doing so, watch this. We're not partakers. And our lifestyles does not line up. And whether it's my family or yours, we don't compromise the cause of it. If you're going to do anything, stay. And having done all you can do, just stay. Amen. Hey, are you glad your sins have been washed away? Yeah, hey, are you glad you're not living in Moab today? Hey, 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 listen, every one of us today, whether we want to admit it or not, spend some time in Moab. Yeah, hey, Spiritually speaking, we spent time in Moab. Matter of fact, we spent time in Egypt. Thank God we didn't die in Egypt. We're not living in Egypt. Come on, we're heaven right here. Thank God we didn't raise our babies down in Egypt. Yeah, Amen. Amen. We don't have to go back to Moab. And we don't have to continue living in Moab. Hey, listen, watch this. I've been as honest as I'm to be. After a service like this tonight, I'm be preaching what I preach tonight. Getting right with God over what we just talked about is not the shame. The shame is knowing you need to and refusing to that. Isaiah said there's a day coming. I read to you New Testament scripture where that's been for people. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Amen. That Bible is for every cell in heaven. And I promise you, if it's in there, it's going to happen. Amen. I, I'll say this. I said I was done, so I'm closing with this right here. I remember telling Preacher Feldman about three weeks before he went on to be the Lord. I said, Preacher, he said, how's the church going, son? I said, Preacher, it's going good. I said, but I'm telling you, there's things that you preached to me that would happen. But now I'm preaching to a congregation of people that has happened. Here's what he said. He said, and there's more to come. And that Bible will always forgive us. Do I believe that because he said so? <coughs> I like it that he said But I believe it because I've watched the Bible do exactly what it says. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I love you tonight. Boy, ain't God good. Amen. All we love you. Thank you for your precious word. Lord, I pray tonight that our hearts and our souls, Father God, will be drawn closer to you. Lord, I pray that we'd be that, that you'd have us to be. <clears throat> God, I pray you'd give glory and honor to yourself. Lord, we need you today. Lord, help us, Father, not to hold on to our lifestyle that is contrary to the Word of God tonight. Lord, help us, Father, to bury those things tonight. Get them covered by the blood of the Lamb, that we might live a life that would honor you and please you. Glorify you tonight. We'll sure love you and thank you for who you are and that you do in Jesus' name. Amen.